Lesson 10.3a, Identifying Equivalent Expressions. One method we can use to find if two expressions might be equivalent is to evaluate them for the same value of the variable. The expressions are equivalent if we get the same answers no matter which value we assign to the variable. So here we have two expressions. We have 2 times x plus 3 in parentheses, and here we just have 2x plus 6. These are equivalent expressions, because if we put a 0 for x, they equal 6. If we put a 1 for x, they both equal 8. If we put a 2, they both equal 10. If we put a 3, they both equal 12. And if we put a 10, they both equal 26. And if we let x be equal to other values, they'll be equal to each other, so these expressions are equivalent. But we need to check. We need to be careful. Two expressions may be equivalent with one value, but not other values for the variable. If we let x equal 4, we have 5 times 4 plus 2, well that's 22. And for this one, we would have 6 times 4 minus 2, that equals 22. And it looks like they're equivalent, because x is equal to 4 in both of them, and we got the same number 22 as our answer. But look what happens when we try to put in 5 or 6. We get a 27 here, and we get a 28 here. We get a 32 here, and we get a 34 here. So these expressions are not equivalent. Expressions are equivalent if we get the same answer, the same result, no matter which value we assign to the variable. Equivalent expressions have the same value for all values of the variables. If they're equivalent with only certain values, they're not equivalent expressions. We need to get the same result no matter what the value of the variables are. So here we have 4 times a plus 5 in parentheses, and it's equal to 4a plus 20. If a is 0, they both equal 20. If a is 1, they both equal 24. If a is 2, they both equal 28. And we could keep going. These expressions are equivalent because of the distributive property. The distributive property states if we multiply a sum by a number, we'll get the same result if we multiply each add-in by that number and add the products. So remember the distributive property, we take turns going to each term. And we have 4 times a plus, because there's a plus here, 4 times 5. We have a 4a plus 4 times 5. That gives us a 4a plus 20. So if a was equal to 2, we'd have 4 times 2 plus 4 times 5. Or we could just add inside and make it a 7 and say 4 times 7. So the distributive property is saying we can multiply by the sum. Here's the sum, 7, and we'll get 28. Or we can multiply each add-in. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 4 times 5 is 20, and we get 28. So these expressions are equivalent because of the distributive property. So we can use the distributive property to match equivalent expressions. Here we have some expressions in list A, some in list B, and we need to draw lines to match them. We can use the distributive property and do 3 times n, that's going to give us a 3n, and 3 times 1, and we have a minus sign here, so that's going to be 3n minus 3. Here, we distribute the 3 into the parentheses, we have 3n plus 3 times 1 is 3. Now, we can look at these and remember that the commutative property of addition states that we can add in any order. So, looking at this one, we have a 3n plus 1, and here we have a 1 plus 3n. They're just switched around. We can add in any order, so these match. And we have 3n minus 3, that matches down here, and we have 3 plus 3n, we can add in any order, they're just switched around, so these match. 
By using the distributive property, we were able to find out which expressions were equivalent. Be careful. Remember to look out for exponents. We learned about them in Lesson 9.1a, b, and c. Here we have x squared, which is x raised to the second power. That means we have x times x. Here we have x cubed, or x raised to the third power. That means x times x times x. Here we have x raised to the fourth power. That means we have x times x times x times x. If we let x equal 2, then 2 raised to the second power is 2 times 2. That's a 4. If we raise it to the third power, now we're multiplying it by another 2. We have 4 times 2. That's 8. And if we multiply it by even another 2 so that it's 2 raised to the fourth power, it's equal to 16. So even though they have the same base, because the exponents are different, we have a different product. So be careful. When there's a coefficient, so if we have 4x, that means 4 times x. And if x is equal to 2, 4 times 2 is 8. If we have 4x raised to the second power, then we have 4 times x times x, which is 4 times 2 times 2. That's 8 times 2. That's 16. And if we have 4x cubed, which is 4x raised to the third power, then that means we have 4 times x times x times x, which would be 4 times 2 times 2 times 2. That would be 32. So remember, when a variable is next to a coefficient, we multiply. And if we have a coefficient with a variable outside of the parentheses, we can distribute the 2x into the parentheses to each term within the parentheses. This would be 2x times x plus 2x times 4. For the 2x times x, that means, because this is multiplication itself, we have 2 times x times x. That would be 2x raised to the second power. Then, for the 2x times 4, we have 2 times x times 4. And the commutative property of multiplication states that we can multiply in any order. So we can rearrange these to make this 2 times 4 times x. That will give us an 8x. So when a variable is directly next to a coefficient, we multiply. So that's why this is 2 times x times x, and we got 2x raised to the second power. OK, we got the first part finished. We're going to move on to 10.3b, modeling with equivalent expressions. So if you completely understand the distributive property, you will be completely fine. Have a wonderful day. Join me next time. Bye.